<laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Unbound Book Babes. This week we are wrapping up book club for the month of June and sharing all of our thoughts, spoilers included, on Year of the Reaper. Um, so stick around and let's chat. Lost in the pages, we wander the trees with words as our guide. Our spirit sets sail through magical stories. We embark on a quest and bound book babes, we journey our best. So, you know how last week when I was like, I need that oh, moment? Yes. It came in a big way. <laughs> <laughs> it did it did the funny thing is is that you had said at the end of chapter 26 like shock and awe yeah and at the end of 25 i was like what did i miss there was no shock and awe here and then i had to go back and be like oh oh, oh next chapter i didn't miss anything <laughs> yes i was like oh my gosh so turns out that the queen as we know her is not was not the real queen the real queen caught the plague and they left her behind and the i'm gonna say imposter queen was mari yeah the the best friend <laughs> Like, up until that point, you were kind of getting to a point where you're like, this doesn't make any sense. It's like, why does she hate them so much? Like, I'm... All of a sudden, you're like, it doesn't make any sense. And then I think it was at the end of chapter 25 where she's like, if you can avoid hurting her, I did love her once. And you're like, okay, what has gone so far off the rails that one person is totally fine with everything and one person is a lunatic? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I thought it was... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I thought it was... Like, so many small details made sense, like, why Cassia's brother was so anxious and nervous in, like, behaving the way he was, and the whole, like how she knew about the coins and the dress it, or the silk to make the wedding dress, like all of that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, they tried to, and I think we do this in, in our normal everyday life where they tried to like, kind of like, Oh, he's nervous. Cause he's actually gay and he doesn't want anybody to know that he's gay. Um, and I was kind of bummed out by by them dropping that in there because they kind of just dropped it and then like just went went right around it right like oh yeah. he's gay and his mother died and he's buried out there and he goes and he gets so drunk and he cries um anyways so <laughs> and i was like well i guess you know i haven't read a standalone fantasy in a long time yeah well, i guess you kind of have to skirt around some of those details Mm -hmm. or you know like that felt like that could have been explored or talked about a little bit more yeah i really would like a ventalius novella or story about him with his love and now him on exile or him who ran away <laughs> right. for five years. I want that story in a book. And I think it would be Absolutely. really cool to do like flashbacks in that of like his first love with, oh, I forget the character's name because we met him literally, like you said, once. We met his spirit <laughs> once in the whole book. So I think it would be a really fun little twist that could be given to us. Because he is an interesting character. His older brother is an interesting character. Yeah. Um, I don't understand the whole point of Cassia being able to see dead people. I feel like, did I miss something? I felt like that never came to a head. 
you know, when I, when I like closed the book or like, like got the last page on my Kindle rather, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, man, we never really <laughs> dove into the fact that he's a reaper who can see dead people that, you know, it's just like, it was used as a tool throughout the book to learn very niche things that did help along the story and helped him as an individual. But I really think that there was a bit of a letdown with explaining why and what about him seeing dead spirits. Right. Or if, um, if I don't know what to call her, I guess they call her Princess Jehan after we figure out who she is. Mm -hmm. If she survived it, I guess she should have also been able to see dead people. And, you know, I don't know how you would have tied that in or if it would have mattered. Because it's not like we ever got anything from her point of view anyways. Right. Yeah. And to talk about her, like, what a (laughs) cruel twist of fate to that poor woman. Like, holy crap. But it's crazy because she told them to, like, take her place and the war. And then she just became so bitter over time. No, but haven't you ever done anything nice for somebody? And then you're like, God damn. That really bit me in the ass. Yeah, I guess. done that. (laughs) Yeah, I guess. (laughs) We all should have just laid in that field and died together. (laughs) Yep. You know, I mean, because can you imagine, I don't know, can you imagine being like, oh, take my place, I think I'm going to die, and then not dying, and then being like, well, now what? Like, now, I I don't know, I'm not a good person, I'd be bitter as hell, I'd be petty and bitter as hell. <laughs> I'm not a good person. <laughs> All right, I'd like to switch back now. <laughs> yeah, which is basically what she wanted, It like, at the end. <laughs> Yeah, this Freaky Friday moment is over. Switch it all back. <laughs> yeah, this Freaky Friday moment. Did you see they're coming out with the Freaky Freaky Friday too? Uh, no. Who's it with? Uh, Lindsay Lohan and uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis. They're doing a number two. Doing a number two. I don't think I should have said it like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but <sighs> that seems dumb. Yeah. Hollywood is really running out of ideas. They're They're... grossly running out of ideas. Yeah. As a bit of a tangent, speaking of movie remakes, uh, did you see the new Mean Girls movie? No. They made it into a musical. Um, It was a little bit weird. Um, It just wasn't quite as funny. They used all the same funny lines that people have been repeating for, what, 10, 15 years now? Uh, and I just don't think the whole premise of Mean Girls 1 was that they called that girl a lesbian for the whole movie. And then at the end, she was like, I'm Lebanese, you idiot. And it was the fact that, like, Regina George didn't know what Lebanese was. (laughs) And I didn't even get to the end of the movie. So I don't even know if they held true to that one joke that the whole movie was based on. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I... I didn't know that's what the whole movie was based on, that one joke. (laughs) (laughs) I just thought it was about bullying in high school. (laughs) I mean, it is, but the whole idea that Regina George hated her because she was a lesbian. (laughs) Yeah. I'm Lebanese. That's hilarious. Oh my gosh. (laughs) That went right over my head. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. Somebody on TikTok pointed it out. (laughs) Cool. I'm in good company. Nice. Um, okay, so back to the topic at hand, because we don't suffer extremely from ADHD at all. Not at all. <laughs> um, where were we at? Uh Princess Jehan wanted her life back. Mm-hmm. Okay. What was about the ending. Oh, okay, yes, that's what I was about to bring up. So you were kind of bummed about the ending. It came together so quickly. I remember being on, like, when they were, the carriage diverged and being at, like, 91% on my Kindle and going, like, holy crap. This is going to, like, 
wrap it up quick and it did now i think how like the villain was like do do i use the word dispatch mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> how the villain was dispatched was not very satisfying like, I really wish, like, instead of being, s <laughs> like, s s <laughs> and she only had, like, a slice on her collarbone. I'm like, why didn't you, like, stab her in the throat? Like, <laughs> I don't know, right? That was one of those moments where you're like, oh, her skirt's on fire. Oh, she's done. Oh, that, that was it. <laughs> yeah. And then I... And then at the end where Cassia just like goes back to his keep and takes five months to like become a person again. And I'm like, that don't happen in five months, Willis. And that's really long. That's not long enough for your issues, bro. Your trauma's too deep. No, that was, it was all so weird and... It, it was really unfortunate because of the slow buildup and mm -hmm. all the interesting things that happened in that buildup. And then yeah. it just kind of like, you know, like it just kind of fizzled out. I don't know. Yeah. But the author's note was super interesting. Yeah. And this is the first time I've ever read an author's note at the end of a book. So. <laughs> It was super interesting how she gained inspiration for the story, how it had some, like, some of the things that she used as inspiration were seated, are seated in fact. Um, that's wild. I had no idea about that history. So it's almost like more of a historical fiction mm -hmm. than an actual just wild fantasy. Yep. Or maybe she's one of the very few fantasy authors to admit that it's based on fact. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> Looking at you, SJM. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that was, ugh, I hate to be that person, but that may have been the most interesting part of the book was the author's note. <laughs> yeah, I, like it was a good story. I gave it four stars, um, but it wasn't like... I'm not like running out to recommend it to anybody kind of thing. No, I don't know. Yeah. So I'm glad I read it though, because it's a little bit different take. Uh, kind of like what I said in week one recap, it's a little bit different take on what I'm normally reading. It's more of a, mm -hmm. you know, it's set in more of a Spanish uh, background instead of like an English background. So I really enjoyed that kind of switch up there. Yeah, the Spanish vibes. I did really enjoy that. Um, it does make me want to sit on a beach and eat paella. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> I don't even know if that's a beach dish. <laughs> I guess if you could eat anything on the beach and now it's a beach dish. Um uh, the only thing I didn't really like about the writing style, though, is that it was, like, a very, I don't want to say basic or plain, but, like, an easy read, mm -hmm. right? And so it's a pretty easy read. And then there's just randomly these, like, really difficult words at the most, like, inconvenient of times. And you're like, what? Why would... <laughs> I was just enjoying my easy read, and now I gotta go find a freaking dictionary. Mm-hmm. So, it was just I was wondering if you know what those ancient aqueducts looked like. I had kind of just guessed they were like the ones from Rome that like they, I guess my hand has to be in the frame, but they come down and then they have the big arches. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. They climbed up one of those. Yeah. <laughs> at night. <laughs> well, there's a forest fire happening at their back. 
I guess there's there's really nothing else that could get me to climb up one of those. For real. That would be it, my life. Ugh. Saving my own ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're going to burn to death. Oh, okay, I'll climb. <laughs> so, what did you rate the book? I don't know. I kind of avoided rating it. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. Three and a half. Yeah. Three out of five. I don't know. I was just... There were so many things that were, like, almost interesting. Like, Ventias, right? Uh, his story. So close to being very interesting. Uh, the whole being able to see dead people. Mm -hmm. So close to being very interesting. Um, there was just no point in to cast being able to see ghosts. Yeah. Like, I just didn't feel like that. I, I guess you said you felt like it moved the story along a little bit, but I needed a little bit more as to why the year of the Reaper, plus he can see ghosts. And then it was like it wasn't really a fantasy because nothing fantastical happened. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Like he didn't he didn't utilize the ghosts in any way. They they just kind of became like and then there was that moment where you're like, I don't know if he's talking to a ghost or a real person because I can't remember if they were see-through or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it, like you said, it had really good base elements that weren't explored super deeply. And again, to your point, it's a standalone. Some of the things you have to like mention and get through quickly. Um but I still think that I would have liked the whole Reaper thing to be explained a lot more. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know why Elena didn't come up, like, start to, like, notice something and bring up the conversation because she's a historian. If there was other ones, she would know. It could have been a really interesting line to add to their romance. Um, and... It didn't, but I thought it could have been like a cool little thing, but it was just left alone to hang out there and kind of feel like a loose end. Agreed. Agreed. Yep. So, so the next book that we're reading for July is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. It has 4.2 stars on Goodreads. And it came out in 2018, so it's a few years old now, about six years old. But um, it did re... It did... I'm sorry. It did win a Goodreads Choice Award for, for Best Fantasy in 2018. So... Really? Yes. Cool. Yep, so that's our next book. Um, I'm super excited about it. It... I've seen it kind of... I believe tomorrow is July. Girl, don't talk to me about it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. It's crazy. I, we're, our, mm -hmm. I really wish they would... We don't have Friday off, and I hate that. It's just like Thursday. We have Thursday off randomly. <laughs> like, all right. That seems well. silly. Okay, so we're I guess we're halfway through the year. This is a little bit of a tangent. What do you think is the best book you've read thus far? Mm. Man. And maybe maybe best is the wrong word. Just like most memorable, best like or one that just kind of sticks with you. I know best is kind of a difficult. Um, you know, that's a great question. I have not read that many books this year. Hmm. Maybe... Honestly, I feel that too. I yeah. feel like I just haven't been reading as much. I haven't been reading as much. I also just like nothing 
has been a showstopper for me. Like right now I started the Four Horsemen series that I got for Christmas and I'm on Pestilence book one. And it's, I'm like halfway through and it's just okay. Like it's not, <laughs> I'm a little disappointed in it. Um, and I don't know. I'm just, honestly, I really liked Bride by Allie Hazelwood. I did enjoy that one quite a lot. And I really like the Halfling Saga series that I started this year. But um, I kind of took a pause on book three because book four doesn't come out until like 2025. And I'm going to have to like, yeah, I have to like remember those books and what happened so I can <laughs> so I did I bought it because I wanted to own it because they're beautiful um I showed it a couple episodes ago but yeah I know the worst book I've read this year you what I know the worst book I've read this year uh-oh what was it it is Black Rose by Car Karina Hale it was part of the Dracula duology. So the first book is called Blood Orange. And I really liked the first book. The second one kind of just fell on its face. I mean, I I was reading the first one. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to read the second book. And then it ended on such a good note that I read the second book. But the second one kind of fell on its face. Mm. But it was yeah. a really cool storyline and how she played into the second book it was it was very unique hmm. i need to reevaluate my reading <laughs> i think <laughs> but like i said i'm such a mood reader and so right now i just don't have a mood <laughs> yeah yeah so i feel you like i feel you picking music is hard right now too like when i'm driving and whatever like i can't Silence. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst when you're driving trying to pick music because it's like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> yep. And you're like, okay, look, I'm stuck in the car with myself. I need to think of just like one song that I want to listen to. And I'm like, nah, nah. <laughs> yep. All right. So we'll see you next week. Stay tuned. <laughs> and until then, keep reading. <laughs>